Well, hey, how y'all doing out there today? Uh, listen, I want to talk about a little something different today. Uh, our health, our food, our water. Uh, our water is one of my biggest concerns. I am associated with many water protectors, uh, many individuals as well as groups of people that have seen the plight and uh, and the critical the critical place we are in history about our water. Only about a third of the water on this planet is actually clean enough to drink, and the rest and then about another twenty five percent of our water they uh, recycle and recycle and sell back to us in different kind of ways, but it's chemically altered water. Uh, and the rest is water, salt water, y'all. So I don't know what uh, uh, non-potable water. So I don't, I don't know what to say about this water. Our drinking water is very critical right now. Um, and I was just looking at this article a little while ago about this clean meat uh, issue, lab meat, laboratory-induced created meat, man-made meat. <laughs> and it seems crazy to me, and it seems wild. But I actually started looking into it for probably. I've been looking into it for about the last couple of hours. And, uh, I mean, unless they're really trying to fool somebody, it seems like decent science. I don't want to eat it, uh, but it's, it's not much different than the hamburger that you're eating right now, say, at McDonald's or Burger King. Fast food. Fast food beef is what I'm going to talk about here. And it got me to thinking about something that came up, uh, a reality that came up to me uh, uh, several years back about water and beef and methane and what's going on with our planet and, and commercial farming and um, the reasons why it was bad, I couldn't find any good reason for commercial beef farming and commercial hog farming. I just couldn't because, for one, we have natural meats and, and pork out there in the wilderness, but that's fine. Everybody's not a hunter. I don't expect them to do it. But most of those two meats in particular, along with chicken, of course, but, but the beef and pork, make a lot of people sick. It's hard to keep. It's got a lot of growth hormones in it. It's got a lot of stuff in it to make to get FDA approved. Yeah, you never hear of a deer meat uh, sickness outbreak. You never hear of a hog meat, wild hog meat sickness outbreak. You never hear of a wild turkey outbreak of some disease from the wild turkey. No, nah, but it's not FDA approved, so nobody gets sick from it. But uh, when you go deeper than that, because there's a lot of people out there that are either vegetarian or vegan, and I applaud you for that. Uh, I believe in, uh, I got my first rule is uh, I got to eat, okay? And then I choose what I eat. And, uh, and sometimes when I don't have that choice, I have to I have to eat other things. So I can eat with vegans. I can eat with regular meat eaters. I can eat with anybody because it would be easier for me to say what I don't eat than what I do eat because I was taught to eat everything on my plate. So I just want to get that one correct. I, I, I appreciate what the vegans and the vegetarians do. But I but I do appreciate some, some real meat, and many people do. Well, where, where this has become detrimental to our water supply, I'm not going to bring up the pink slime meat. I'm not going to bring up the meat patties, how they use them at Burger King, or even if it's horse meat or beef. I'm not going to bring up any of that stuff. I just want to bring up the water use. I, f I had found out here a few years back that it takes 600 gallons of water on average. This is an average now. 600 gallons of water to produce one pound of beef from a beef cow, like a black Angus. Let's just say a black Angus cow. Can they get up about three, four, five hundred pounds when they slaughter them? And this cow has drank so much water during that time period. You do the math, divide the weight of the cow, the beef that's actually used by the amount of water it took to uh, sustain that life and uh, raise that cow. 600 gallons of water for one pound of, of hamburger meat, for beef, one pound of beef. Now let's look at that at the fast food scale. That means that's 150 gallons of water for every quarter pounder. At, at, at McDonald's, okay? We'll just kind of put it on working man's term. Because I know every single one of us has been in a rush or we only get 30 minutes for lunch and we're pushed or, or just not given much options uh, with time constraints and work and, and everything on what we're going to eat. So a lot of us stop at McDonald's. A lot of us go through the drive through um, at Popeye's Chicken. A lot of us like to go through the drive through at Taco Bell, wherever it is you like to eat. Uh, we like to do it fast and quick because we're America and we're always on the go and we only get a 30-minute lunch. So, um, well, that's fine and maybe for one, once here and there. But 600 gallons, I mean, every hamburger you eat roughly took 150 gallons of water to make. You ever look at the sign on the McDonald's, the big McDonald's arches? 
Remember when it used to give the numbers? I remember when I was a little kid, we used to watch the numbers. 5,000 served a day. So many served a day. Now it's billions and billions served daily. 150 gallons of water for one McDonald's quarter pounder, and they sold a billion quarter pounders in one day. That's 150 billion gallons of water, y'all. So I just want you to think about that because, see, here's the cool thing. You don't really got to give up your meat. I'm not asking you to give up nothing. In fact, like I said, I eat according to the need. Uh, if I got to eat something here, I got to eat something there. I mean, a lot of you people say you won't eat this, that, and the other, but get thrown in the county jail. You'll be eating some crap. Because <laughs> when you get hungry, you'll eat anything. But but you say you won't eat that, that. Well, when you do eat, uh, the thing we can start doing for anything, for your health, for the for the health of our children, uh, for your money, for, for good to save your money, uh, fight cancer, to, 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 and to fight back to corporations and say, hey, screw you. Don't eat out no more. Start eating at home. It is a little bit of a burden to cook something. And some of you may not even be able to do it. So why don't you get a neighbor to help you out? Why don't you get a brother or a sister or a cousin? Or uh, maybe you got a kid that's in school that's old enough to cook. Start to teach them how to cook. So when you come home from work, you got a dinner. You got something to take for lunch. Stay away from that because it's not just your, your life you're saving. You see what I'm saying now? It's not just the, your life you're saving. It's not just your, ch your children's health. It's not just sticking it to the man. It's saving the water that we need, y'all, to sustain on this planet for a little bit longer. Did you ever notice? I saw I saw another statistic the other day. They said we're going to hit 9 billion people by 2050. Well, wow, man, that's like 32 years away. We went from 4 billion people in 1992 to 6 billion people in 10 years. Um, that was 2 billion people right there. So you're saying and we're 8 billion now. Uh, here in 2018, uh, 7.8 billion. So we're only going to go 1.2 billion instead of these 2 billion people jump. Nah, it seems like people are going to be dying. I, that's a low prediction um, as far as I'm concerned. I, I don't think that's going to uh, – I think that's showing there's going to be a decline of people on the planet, actually, for how we put out. But the point I'm trying to get at is if we only got a third of clean water on the planet right now that, of our whole clean drinking water supply, and we're adding on more people, going to be 9 billion by 2050. What's it going to be by then? Because that water has been dropping dr drastically. Also, we could get rid of half the GMO modified growth hormone induced cattle and swine out there that are just being raised to eat. We could get rid of half of them just by not eating fast food no more. You don't got to have it. There's nothing wrong with having a good dinner uh, every once in a while. Matter of fact, I'm thinking about having me a little guinea dinner after I get off this uh, Facebook since that some bitch wants to get up right behind me and get all upset. But uh, think about dinners at home. Think about people going in on a cow, uh, you and another family or you and your neighbor or something, or you and a brother or sister or whoever, and y'all go in on, on a cow or go in on a hog like a quarter hog, and you get to watch it. You, you feed it. You, you, know, you don't got to go look at it because I'm going to tell you something. I was just talking to a sister about this. Of all the animals I've ever raised, I've never eaten one. I just can't do it. I tried raising rabbits. I tried uh, raising uh, hogs. I tried to raise a few hogs. Uh, uh, one one calf, but I was on a farm, and uh, uh, I and I still, when it came time to slaughter, I just sold my interest. And then I just said, "Hey, man, y'all just uh, I'm just gonna pay to have it cow live out its life." So I lost a lot of money on that cow. Uh, that's just me. Once I look in the eyes and make that connection, I can't do it. But I am a hunter. I love deer meat. Uh, we have an epidemic of wild hogs going from uh, the East Coast to the West Coast. Probably half the United States has a hog, wild hog problem. And as I said before, these are lean, healthy animals. You don't see them sick. You don't. <laughs> they they ain't the easiest thing in the world to get either. But that's some damn good eating and some good lean meat. Uh, uh, but what I'm trying to say is, you can have a big barbecue. Uh, I think people should start eating meat. Maybe like that looking at it more of a, a treat more of a hey let's celebrate like a celebration thing if you are a meat eater now and i'm not trying to offend the vegans or the vegetarians i'm just trying to get real about how we can consume less beef to save our water my whole point in this is saving our water the water we ain't got right now we ain't got this water y'all so we got to do something and uh so making suggestions about this is the best thing i can do um but uh, like big barbecues and stuff like that where people eat a whole deer or, or a whole hog you feed a whole neighborhood at one time. That's, you see what the point I'm trying to make? Instead of just eating ribeyes every night or 
I mean, that, that stuff ain't even good for you. You ought to see how that rots in your gut. And I love meat, by the way. Now, I'm not going to sit there and talk it down, but I ain't going to talk about it like it's healthy. It ain't the healthiest thing. Like the only thing good in, in beef is protein and, um, and, and keeping you going. Uh, there are some other vitamins and stuff in it, but it's not my staple diet. I like a good mix, and I think we should all think that way. And then when it is time to sit down, just like when it's time to sit down and have some sweets or it's time to sit down and have a glass of milk, you don't, you, we, we got to quit overindulging and overconsuming on things that just ain't healthy for us, or better yet, not healthy for our planet that are just completely taking our water, our good uh, uh, green pastures, our, our, our grass, our, our, our vegetable type food, uh, and even the air. Because the methane release on this, just by dropping, uh, well, let's put it this way. If you dropped all industrial farming, commercial beef farming and hog farming, you would drop the methane uh, release in our planet right now by 96%, 96% less methane by not eating beef and, and hogs, just beef and hogs. But think if we cut that down, now industrial or like fast food beef and pork and chicken is uh, about 65 to 70% of, of, these, of these animals. So if we just ate at home again, let's just say we cut all the industrial commercial type food out, prefab free food, and we just started eating at home again and preparing our own meat. Well, we bought our meat from the store, blah, blah, blah. We could get rid of 65% of the methane emissions right now. Right now, that would stop them from having to spray the skies. That would stop them from having to do geoengineering. It'd also take away their weather warfare weapons and give them a reason uh, you know, to, to make other bullshit we don't want to you know, piss off the government, but it would save our skies. It would save our atmosphere. Uh, it would save our water. It would save our health. So what the hell, y'all? I want you to really think about this. So is the clean meat coming up? Is that a good idea? To me, if you really want a burger and uh, you're not going to go through the, the pains of getting a real burger and you want some of that fast food stuff, hey, if it don't cause cancer and it's not going to key, I'd rather see clean meat than cows. Uh, and it's not because I'm trying to take up for the cows. It's that they drink up them stinking ass cows and them hogs, y'all drink up all the water, and uh, and they're releasing all that methane. And you're not thinking about that just so you can have a Big Mac, just so you can have a barbecue pork sandwich. Big deal. Eat less of that. Eat more at home. Eat more healthier. And think about what the cows are over consuming to do. Think about what the hogs are doing to your water supply. Because when it comes down to the end. The last thing you're going to need is water before food. And you need to think about that. Without water, there ain't no life. Without water, you can't even grow food. And, and, and with the water we got now, the animals that we're eating are drinking up our water. Think about that. The animals you want to eat are drinking up the water we need to sustain our life. All right? Think about that today, y'all. And, uh, and stay away from that fast food place. That shit don't do nothing but make you slow. And it's full of refined sugar. And it just, you know what? It ain't even as good as it used to be. I remember when it was actually good. And once a week, we'd go get some. But I like my grandmama's Big Mac. You ever had Granny Big Mac where it's a big old fat burger? And then there's two pieces of white bread. And when you grab it, it puts the big old fingerprints in it, you know. And you got to eat it and it's slobbering all over your hand. <laughs> That's a hamburger, y'all. Think about that. And Granny's had it made back then. I love y'all. Let's save our world. Save our lives. And think. And I'll be smart with each other and talk about these kind of things. Change your lifestyle. Don't don't get rid of everything. Just enjoy it like it should be in moderation. Peace.